Hello and welcome to Bags of Action. My name is Pete and this is a five minute Bags of Action review of everything, everywhere, all at once from 2022. An ageing Chinese immigrant is swept up in an insane adventure where she alone can save the world by exploring other universes connecting with the lives she could have led. So this film was directed and written by the Daniels, namely Dan Quan and Daniel Scheinert, who together have made things like Swiss Army Man, and they've also directed episodes of TV show Legion. And they very much had their own style, having come from award-winning music videos in the past too. It was produced by the Daniels and also by the Russo brothers, who you will know, of course, from their work with Marvel, amongst other things. Uh, it's an interesting cast, this one. So the main character, Evelyn Wang, is played by Michelle Yeoh, who you'll know from lots of things, including Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Alongside it, you've got Stephanie Hsu from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. You've got uh, Kei Hui Kwan, uh, formerly known as Jonathan Kei Hui Kwan, uh, who plays Waymond Wang. And he was uh, in Indiana Jones, The Temple of Doom as Short Round and also was in The Goonies and later a film I quite like called Breathing Fire. Alongside them, you've also got some heavy other heavyweights. You've got James Hong uh, from Big Trouble in Little China, of course, and Jamie Lee Curtis from many, many things, including True Lies. Okay, so that's the main cast of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Um, So before I start, I need to say that I went into this film almost cold. I saw a trailer so long ago that I'd almost forgotten about all of it, but I just knew I really wanted to see the film. But having very little knowledge made the experience so much better than knowing too much. It's the kind of film that really benefits from you going in open-minded. So I'm going to talk generally, and I'm not going to get too bogged down in specifics. So the first 10 minutes of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once reminded me a bit of the film Parasite, which I really like. It's got a real world presented in quite a bleak and downbeat way. But when things shift gears and change tone... They really shift gears and change tone. In some ways, this is almost four or five movies in one, and it's got enough imagination for the whole of Hollywood combined. Now, a film with this many ideas could easily have become a mess, and maybe some people will feel like that about it. But I love the fact that they commit to their premise so strongly, the idea of this multiverse. The family at the centre of the film as well are so believable and easy to empathise with and relate to that you can't help but be swept along by proceedings. Jamie Lee Curtis is cast very much against type and her role is an important one. But for me, it's the two leads that absolutely made this film. They transcend even the film's most intriguing plot points and scenes to deliver exceptional performances. Michelle Yeoh, I believe, has never been better, and it's so good to see Kei Hui Kwan back in a major role. His range here shows he should be doing far more films, and yes, I do think he should be taking on the mantle in Indiana Jones and continuing his short round adventures. Now, he's been working as a fight coordinator in the years since he was acting regularly, and that shows here too. He has some fight scenes. In fact, all the cast have some fight scenes, some of which with hilarious stunt doubles, but they all have fight scenes which are really, really well done and a great blend of kind of high-octane action and laugh-out-loud humour. So what is this movie? I've been asking myself that a lot since I saw it. Now, if you like Legion, as I did, especially the more surreal musical numbers, then I'll think you'll like this. This is a bit like the work of directors like Spike Jonze or Michelle Gondry, but with a stronger sense of comedy and even more of the absurd. It's one part family drama, one part sci-fi movie, one part action film, one part gross out comedy, but all at the same time. I guess that's everything everywhere all at once. Now, it's intelligent while also being silly, hilarious while also being deep and meaningful. This, for me, is brave filmmaking, and it shows there are still true auteurs out there. This is the perfect antidote to the average blockbuster franchise, despite sharing similar DNA on the surface at least to things like Doctor Strange or Into the Spider-Verse. Now, I think the average moviegoer may struggle with this film, but people with an open mind and some art house leanings will lap it up. The crowd I saw it with seemed to be almost exclusively university students, and they seemed to really enjoy it. The laughter ran through the auditorium from the very early on, and by the end, that had turned to bittersweet tears. 
Yes, one minute you're laughing at a sex joke and the next you're having existential crisis in your own head. And that in some ways reminded me a little bit of the comic book series Sex Criminals, the way that they could weave between two very different tones. Visually, this film is stunning. It plays with the art form and plays is the right word. And you can sense the fun they must have had making this movie, doing some really cool and interesting things. Also, the music, everything about it really, really struck a chord with me. As I say, it leans into humour, while also tugging at the heartstrings and exploring family relationships. It is almost overloaded with ideas to the point that it might break, but the Daniels stay just on the right side of sanity. A subversive indie film wrapped in big budget clothing, and I'm so glad I saw it on the big screen. Of the three of us that went to see it together, there was a sliding scale of enjoyment, but it was right in my wheelhouse. I, I, I was really, really impressed. Now, a friend of mine has asked me since I saw this film how I would describe it without giving too much away. And I would say it's like being John Malkovich meets The Matrix with a side order of British comedy duo Vic and Bob. It doesn't really sound like a real thing, right? And actually, partway through the film, a few times I was like, am I really watching this? But again, I'd much rather watch a film like this than something where I can guess exactly where every scene is going. With this film, I had no idea what was going to happen from one minute to the next. So, with all that considered, I haven't told you that much about the film, but it's intriguing. I would recommend that you go and see it, and I'm going to give Everything Everywhere All at Once four bags of action out of five. It came very close to being five, but I just couldn't quite do it. But I must say, I'm going to go back and watch Swiss Army Man because I haven't seen it, and I'll be watching anything the Daniels do in the future. Um, and if you like this, I, yeah, that I would do the same. So, have you seen Everything, Everywhere, All the, all at Once? Do you agree with my assessment of it? It's a bit of a Marmite movie. I think you can love it or hate it. But feel free to comment below or get in touch with us via email, on Facebook, or on Twitter. We have new episodes coming out weekly, alongside, of course, our full-length podcast. And don't forget to give the video a like. Um, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to get notifications. Bags of Action will always be free, but if you'd like to give us a coffee, you can do that at our Kofi page.